Hello, welcome to Warlord Games in Nottingham. It's their annual open day in which they invite people in to take a look around their manufacturing facilities, attend lectures, get some good deals from the shop and see all the games that are taking place in the gaming room. We're going to take the camera around the gaming room and have a chat to a few people, see what's going on here today and give you a sense of the Warlord Games 2019 Open Day. Steve from Arcane Scenery and we've got Pete who's helping Arcane Scenery out today with their demo game which is called Foz de Roos, isn't it Pete? That's correct, yes. Uh, and what, what's this in the peninsula, yeah? Yes, it's Peninsula War, uh, British or Portuguese against the French. We've got two scenarios today, uh, loosely based about around Foz de Roos, which was a, uh, a skirmish type battle um, where two forces came together near a river and a, a small village and fought a battle. Uh, it's a very nice looking model and uh, that's mainly your handiwork, isn't it? That's right, yes. Um, so one of the things that you were telling me about the model is it's, it's interchangeable, or at least potentially interchangeable. You can take the bridge out, you can take the centrepiece. That's right. If you look at the central uh, piece, the village, that is a removable plug. So if you want to take that out and take the bridge out, and also all the trees plug in as well, so you can either put as many trees in or take the trees out. Um, it allows you then to, to build a separate section for the centre if you want to put a fort in there or just uh, just complete the scenery and not have any buildings there you can do that and the purpose of that is often we build these tables and they have one use we use them a few times and then they go into storage or get broken down or whatever this way it just uh, makes the life of the, of the board that much longer that you can use it for, for other games yeah and it does look really good Steve, tell us a bit about the rules, because are these adapted Black Powder rules? Yes, they're, they're our version of the Black Powder rules for club games. We, we affectionately refer them as to Salt Peter, which is a, a slightly watered down version. But Black Powder allows you to adapt the rules, and most people think it's designed for huge tables. And as you can see, we're playing on a 4x4 four four table here. And in effect, we're, we're playing a company level game so the units represent far less men but it still enables you to play a, a, a nice Napoleonic game um, and, and finish the game in an evening so yeah okay right well uh, thanks very much fellas and I hope you uh, enjoy your gaming certainly will yes. thank you so we're now with Pete Brown who is the author of the black powder supplement for the French and Indian Wars which is called what? Dark and bloody grind. That's it, yes. I've not <laughs> forgotten. Um, right, and you're putting on a uh, French Indian Wars game, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what's, it, what's it called? What's it all about? It's a participation game, and uh, we've called it Carry On Up the Ohio because I mean, it's a very uh, light hearted game, um, and it's really just to try and show off uh, some of the rules amendments that we put into the French Indian War book. Um, so I've got a variety of different troop types, got some uh, Native American war bands, we've got some light infantry, we've got some provincials, we've got some civilians, and uh, just to get people playing it and just to introduce them to some of the just small amendments that we've made um, and, and the special abilities, etc. And what are those, what are some of those nice amendments that you get with the French Indian Wars that perhaps you don't get in other black powder conflicts? Well, the key thing is they're going to be smaller games because um, a lot of the um, the actions involve very small numbers of troops which is uh, not normal for black powder games where obviously you've got masses of, of troops like if you, the Crimea game that's opposite us um, so it's just trying to get the flavour of those smaller games and showing people how black powder can actually be used in 10 man units and 12 man units rather than the sort of 30 40 figures that we're used to but also because the board is generally covered in trees and terrain which again is not something we're used to uh, we've had to amend the rules just ever so slightly uh, because woods in black powder tend to be impenetrable and nobody can go through them except skirmishers uh, and so we've amended that to allow all the different troops types to move within the woods but they obviously all are effective differently right, okay. uh, right well uh, thank you very much shall, uh... okay so now we have moved on to the friends of general Haig's table who are always big supporters of warlord games and we've got here the a viking shot game of the battle of lutzen and I'm joined by Andy, who is the inspiration behind the game, and he's uh, 
he's going to tell us a bit about it. So the Battle of Lutz and Thirty Years' War, obviously, that a battle that particularly interests you? Yeah, it's one of the really exciting battles that involves Gustavus Adolphus. So there were lots of periods of the Thirty Years' War, but this is the Swedish phase where the Protestants, Protestant forces hadn't been doing so well. Gustavus comes in as Brutton fell the year before, which is a, a big victory and changes the fortunes. And so then this is the following year, and it's the Titanic battle where uh, Gustavus meets Wallenstein, who's the Imperial Generalissimo, and it's their big showdown battle. They've been toying with one another all year, trying to outmaneuver one another, and finally Gustavus thinks he's caught Wallenstein and forces this battle. Uh, so it's uh, a important for that whole campaigning season, and important as well because in the actual battle, Gustavus was killed. Yeah, spoiler alert there. Yes, Gustavus yes. So, so today we've got to see will he survive the day. So the, a strong Swedish force uh, have caught Wallenstein's forces as they were starting to break up for winter quarters. And now so they've got to try and break the line uh, and break the Imperial force. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Pappenheimer, one of the Imperial uh, generals, is galloping back to try and reinforce the Imperial side. So while, until he arrives, the Imperial forces are quite uh, outnumbered. OK, this is uh, not the first time you played this game, is it? In fact, you did it at Salute. Oh, yes, well, we did, okay. yes. So it obviously plays very well. It's a Black Powder pike and shot game. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and can you tell us just a bit about the things on the table? We've got some very nice looking scenery. Of course, we've got buildings on fire over there. With yes. Complete with flashing fire. Yes. Um, are they, are they scratch-built or are they MDF buildings? Or? So the, the, the buildings are foreground. I think they're actually from their uh, fantasy range. Oh, right. But they're, they're nice sort of, you know, um, timber-framed buildings. Yeah. And I like the idea that they were ruined because yeah. uh, the, the town of Lutzen was set on fire be, to, to, to deny it to the enemy because Wallenstein couldn't hold all of the ground and the city. He set fire to the city, so, so that's so nice. There's some very nice looking windmills as well. Is that one that one been destroyed or is it half built or? So it's half it's, it's half destroyed. I think I think by the end of the battle, they were probably all the windmills here were 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 knocked about. So the timber was obviously valuable for fires and also to build up the imperial artillery positions. So uh, they probably started taking them down. So the idea is that that windmill's half dismantled. Right. Um, and I, I left the other one up just so you can see it was a windmill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're, they're Sarissa um, windmills. Nice, very nice models. A nice, nice, models. Um, nice cloth as well on the table. Teddy bear fur. Teddy bear fur, which yes. You've, which you've sort of cut in, cut roads into. Yes, yeah. So teddy bear fur, uh, about an inch, there's about an inch pile depth into it. Uh, then a, a pair of dog clippers, sha shaved it all over, and then shaved the roads all the way down to the backing material, uh, and then just sand and PVA for the road surface, and then lots and lots of acrylic paint and lots and lots of combing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's very good. And the, the quick note on the figures, are they, are they all Warlord games? Well, don't tell John, but they're not all Warlord. Oh. So there, there are a lot of Warlord, obviously, uh, but there's a few Perry, a few Foundry, uh, a few Tag, uh, you know, the Assault Group, yeah. um, a few uh, Avonpost, that, uh, that Russian, oh, Russian right, firm, yeah. there's one or, one or two of those. Um, well, they all look so very nice collectively, so they all mix in pretty well. Don't they, they? they do, yeah. I mean, you've, the basing and everything uniform, you know, make, gives them a nice uniform look. And uh, I, th I think all those ranges, height-wise, are quite similar. Yeah. So you can uh, you can mix them in units yeah. quite nicely. Well, so, thanks, thanks for telling us a bit about the game and uh, enjoy the day. Thank you. Will do. All right. Right now we're here with Chris from uh, Conflict Point Seven, or at least rather from. Clockwork Goblin, yeah? yeah? Yeah, from Clockwork Goblin. So we're going to talk a bit about Conflict 47. So the table, we've got a bit of a snowy battle going on. What, what's going on over there exactly? Well, we've, uh, we've set most of the Conflict 47 game in, in the, uh, the, the winter of 1946-47. Uh, that's how the game started. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a winter that paralysed the conflict uh, without going into the backstory, how it went on after 45 anyway. What we've got on the table today is a... Uh, a hard fought game, it's a large game, 1800 points, um, Russians versus Germans. We're, uh, we're deliberately showcasing some of the larger and more uh, more striking units. We've got two heavy heavy walkers on both sides, which are the sort of centerpiece figures, but the bulk of the rest of the figures on the table are the Conflict 47 sort of squads and sections. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, shock troopers on the German side, we've got the Ursus uh, werebears on the, the Russian side, and, and so forth. 
So uh, we're just we're just running through a sort of a straight up encounter. I mean, it's really a test of uh, whether the the howitzer toting heavy walkers can deal with the infantry, while the uh, the super anti tank guns on the the respective heavy walkers, the Mastodon and the Zeus, uh, will be sort of hunting each other while the infantry do their stuff. So uh, so that's the idea behind the table, and uh, obviously showcasing as many of our, our specialist units and figures as, as we can get on the get on the game. Oh, and of course you've got a stand here as well with a lot of your uh, lovely painted figures in. Uh, what's new? What's, uh, what's the latest things out? So a uh, few new things to, to show off. Obviously on release today we've, uh, we've got the US Paragon Super Soldiers. Um, they're uh, effectively elite uh, enhanced soldiers that effectively were designed by the Americans to counter the German sort of terror super soldier program such as the you know the Nat Jaeger and the Schreckwolfen which are the sort of the vampiric flyers and the werewolf type equivalents. That's the US answer, they're released today actually for sale and in a similar vein the German Nachtalben or Night Stalkers uh, which are again part of the German super soldier program effectively elite scouts that range ahead of the front lines uh, they actually have the elite special rule, which gives them a chance of having two turns, two actions, two activations a turn. So they're new for sale. And then we've got a few things here that haven't yet been released. Uh, the Nat Jaeger and Shrek Wolfen have some new sculpts. So it's now possible to bring up to units, you know, maximum unit strength with, with unique models rather than repetitions. And the same for the Russian Werebears. Again, three new sculpts allowing you to field six where we previously only had three models that you'd have to duplicate, we can now do the full squads with unique models. Um, so that's the that's the main reveals today. There are some uh, 3D prints you can see on the top there. Uh, that is that is another unit in progress, but it's missing a couple of key components, which will leave people that are walking past to guess what's missing. Um, so that's probably the, uh, the, the the crux of the new stuff today. Right, great. Uh Thanks very much for showing us around. No problem. Good to talk. Right, so we're here now with Derek, who is uh, who is painting some of the Black Seas model for the forthcoming uh, uh, Napoleonic Naval game for Warlord Games. So, what have you got uh, on the table right at this minute, Derek? In this moment, I'm painting uh, HMS Victory. Oh, I've heard of that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is this? Is this a resin model or is this a metal model? Or? Yeah, it uh, as the main body is is a full resin mm -hmm. with a metal mast, and there will be paper sails okay. due to the size. So yeah, yeah, okay. So you got all your reference material here because yes. that's quite easy to come by for victory, I guess. With the specific yeah, victory, yes, it's yeah. a quite quite easy matter. A lot of materials. Yeah, information and pictures yes so you've been doing a lot of um, black sea ships lately have you yes in fact there's a lot in the cabinet over there yes all of them yeah, yes yeah, yeah, okay. so all, all ready for the release so in the I, I'm guessing there's going to be a box set with uh, several uh, models in and then you'll buy an extra models like the victory separately aren't you yes in, in general the they're going to be a plastic models. There's a three different type of plastic models. Mm -hmm. It will be brick, frigate, and the fair trade. In the starter set, you have a brick, six bricks, and three frigates. They're in plastic. They're on the top of the shelf. This is like exactly set as going to be in the starter set, so you can later check. And then as well, the bigger ships, fair trade, some spe some name shapes like victory like constitution the uss constitution there will be resin with the metal beads okay right and uh, what are those are those little long boats you've got there as well this is the gunboats oh they're the gunboats right yes okay. oh, yeah. so they will be on there there is a resin uh, a resin base with the free boats and the metal sails so this is the set and they are uh, as well over there all oh, right okay all right thanks very much Derek. no problem at all This video has been produced by WI Prime. WI Prime is Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. As a WI Prime member, you get access to all Wargames Illustrated videos before anyone else. We'll keep you posted on what's new via the Primetime News Bulletin delivered to your inbox every Friday. If you are not a WI Prime member, you're missing out on loads of benefits, including access to the Wargames Illustrated Vault, freebies, discount vouchers, 
PDFs of the latest magazine and more. Find out more about WI Prime by following the link.